By the way, I do have the ability to appear unprepared at any point in time. (laughs) Hello, everyone, and welcome to our inaugural episode of Eyes on Earth, a bi-weekly podcast series focused on our ever-changing planet and on the remote sensing work that real-life scientists, geographers, engineers, and others are either doing for or affiliated with here at the USGS Aero Center near Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Today our guest is Dr. Tom Loveland, the retired chief scientist at Eros who worked at the center for 39 years before retiring in the spring of 2018. Dr. Loveland is regarded as the world's leading expert on land cover and land cover mapping and monitoring in the United States. Welcome, Tom. Good to be here. So today we want to talk about this place on the South Dakota prairie called the Earth Resources Observation and Science Center, or Eros. You know, there's been more than one tourist out here for a visit who questioned whether we were some top-secret government facility looking for aliens or some such thing. What's the truth about what they do out there at Eros? Our primary mission is is to um, be the uh, central archive and distribution center for civilian images of the Earth. That was why we were envisioned in the um, 1960s and why we ultimately had a building put out here and established to start providing the intelligence needed to understand the condition of the Earth's natural resources. So no aliens? Uh, you know, on any given day, I could point to a few colleagues that I think should be investigated, but as far as I know, nothing confirmed. Oh, good. All right. Why is Eros tucked out there among the corn and soybeans on these rolling farm hills north of Sioux Falls? And and how did we end up out here? Well, it's kind of a two-part answer. Um, In the broadest of senses, when the idea to have a fleet of Earth-observing satellites uh, orbiting the Earth was first proposed, there was a need to have a location in the center of the United States that could track those satellites as they pass across the land surface of the United States. And so that essentially meant a corridor between about Grand Forks, North Dakota, down to Kansas City. Somewhere along that line would put us in a position to see coast to coast. So that's that's why we were in a location that was a potential site. The exact reason why we're here is because of uh, both politics, um, the influence of Senator Carl Munt, a close friend of then President Nixon, and as well the uh, very aggressive efforts of the Sioux Falls Development Foundation to uh, identify a parcel of land that met the government's needs and to offer that land and a building to be the uh, home of this uh, new satellite record. Uh, One of the things that's interesting about Eros is, is it originally was the Eros Data Center, and so it had the distinction of possessing the largest civilian archive of remotely sensed images in the world. What exactly does that mean, and where do all those images come from? Uh, They have come from a wide range of sources. You know, the United States, um, for Department of Agriculture's purposes, the Department of Interior's for mapping, Tennessee Valley Authority, NASA, all kinds of federal agencies were acquiring aerial photography going back to the 1930s. And so there needed to be a home for that. And we are that home, and we have a a lower level of our building that is wall-to-wall film cans containing this incredibly rich historical record. However, the big thing that was envisioned for Eros is that we would be the location for the archive of Landsat images that were being collected by this new generation of civilian Earth observing satellites that had been speculated as being useful in the late 60s and in reality became the reason why the Eros Data Center was built. So we're here in part to house all the imagery and, and data collected from Landsat. Is, is Eros connected to Landsat beyond simply a, a library for all the images? In many, many ways. You know, over time, our uh, responsibilities with Landsat have grown. Originally, we were the archive and distribution center, but we weren't involved in acquisitions. We added to that archive and distribution a science capability that was focused on developing ways in which this new technology could be used to address um, critical natural resources problems. 
over time, we've grown in our role to the point now where we operate the satellites, we uh, manage the, the uh, downloading of imagery and processing and distribution of users worldwide. In fact, um, on a daily basis, you know, hundreds of thousands of images now are electronically distributed around the world. And we do all that here at Eros, out in this cornfield. We, we, we do most of that around Eros. We also have satellite facility at NASA Goddard in, in Maryland, where we have the space segment operations team that actually makes sure the satellites are orbiting and safe and sound and functioning as we need them to. Go a little deeper, if you would, uh, with this Landsat, the imageries, and what the scientists here at Eros do with that imagery and any other remotely sensed images. You know, our primary focus is to use the archive of, of Landsat imagery, but other kinds as well, uh, to understand how the Earth is changing. We spend a lot of time focusing on changes in how the land is used and what the uh, extent of forests and urban areas and grasslands and croplands are and, and how they do change over time. We're also looking at uh, the more uh, real-time changes that are the result of excessive rainfall or drought or, or other variables that alter the condition of the earth. So we're really looking at what's covering the earth, how it's being used, and what its condition is over time. Now, ultimately, that's information needed to start understanding the health of the planet. Um, it's the habitat needed to protect biodiversity and, and wildlife healthy and intact. Uh, are we altering the land surface in a way that creates interactions with weather and climate and causes variability and change? Um, how are we affecting the hydrologic processes of runoff, for example, are all, all some of the things we contribute to. Would it be fair to say that the scientists, geographers here at Eros are having a significant impact on, on our understanding of what's going on in the world at large? Yeah, I think safe to say that um, one of the activities that we're involved in um, that has a huge international impact, for example, is our work in monitoring food security around the world. Um, and while it's not particularly visible in the region, internationally, it's an important part of the U.S. foreign aid program in order to you know, make sure that we're providing assistance uh, and intelligence needed to deal with some of the real acute problems that uh, some corners of the world are facing. On the home front, um, wildfires, drought management, you know, dealing with uh, water balance and water use issues are all things we're very active in. So the last question I've got is, it's, it's been said that Eros is an incredible asset to this state that most people don't know about. Why is that? I guess because we quietly do our work out here in the prairie and uh, keep our nose to the grindstone. We've been talking to Dr. Tom Loveland about the history and work of this place called Eros, where he again worked for 39 years. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Loveland. It was my pleasure. We hope you come back for the next episode of Eyes on Earth. Thanks for joining us. This is a podcast that is a product of the U.S. Geological Survey, Department of the Interior. 